Good morning, everybody. We are going to start the Strawberries and Salad Greens Day 2017 webinar here. We will be recording this webinar, so if you uh, have to jump off early or there's someone else in your organization or your school that is unable to attend, they'll be able to access it from the website. Um, and I'll be sending out an email afterwards that'll come from the webinar organizer email that'll have a link to the website and some other resources as well there. If at any point during the webinar you have questions, you can use the question feature on here or the chat feature and just let us know. We'll try and get to them as they come in. If not, we'll definitely have time for Q&A at the end. Um, we're scheduled from 10 to 11, but we will not take the whole time. So just um, we'll get through the information and then we'll do some time for question and answer at the end. So my name is Erica Walther. I am the Farm to School Specialist at Austin see right now um, we are I'm actually transitioning into a different position soon and we're hiring somebody new but for now I'm still managing this event so if you need anything I will be your point of contact um, one thing to note is that I uh, am due to go out on maternity leave pretty soon and should that happen a little earlier than planned we do have a backup person her name is Carolina she's sitting here with me today um, and I will have her contact information for you at the end. So if for some reason on the day of you try and get a hold of me and you get a bounce back or I'm not picking up my phone, you can try Carolina and she'll be there to help as well. So let's get started. Just a quick overview of what we're going to do today. So we're going to do a little background of the event just to see who's new and um, just give you some information look at what we're, how many schools we have signed up for 2017. We're going to talk about serving local berries and greens at your school. We're going to talk about running your education station. Um, what are some of the additional activities you can choose to do? Uh, we're going to do a slide on special information for external volunteers and then go over some of the materials that you'll be able to get and additional resources and then we'll have time for questions. So some background information. Strawberries and Salad Greens Day is an annual event. We celebrate seasonality and local food and school meals. We've been doing this in DC in various forms since about 2011. And so we're on our seventh year here. Um, this is my fourth or fifth, fifth year, excuse me, doing this event. And so it's really fun, it's really exciting. It's a great way for schools to get engaged with the school meal program. Um, and really just kind of get over that hump of testing is finishing up and kids are getting antsy and um, summer is approaching and the weather's not great today, but usually it's hot out this time of year. So hopefully this is just a really fun event for your schools. Um, we really have two main reasons why we do this. One of, is, one of them is to get kids excited about seeing special fruits and vegetables on their lunch tray and then in turn being more engaged with the school meal program. So we always want to be promoting children to eat school meals um, and get a healthy lunch in, whether it's from home or, or at school. And having fun different berries and greens on their tray is a good way to do that. Uh, we also want to create an opportunity for learning about why it's important to be supporting our local agriculture, the farmers and growers in our region, talking about how delicious locally grown items can be. We're really coming into the summer and this farmer's market season and um, there's a lot of opportunity with farmer's markets over the summer for education, for shopping, for double down on bucks where families can get extra money um, to shop at farmer's markets and buy more fresh fruits and vegetables and locally grown meats and breads and things like that. So we really want to be talking about both of those things. Okay, so before we do the stats, I did a poll. I've never done this before, so I would like to do a poll and see if we can do that with people. Um, let me close to enable share screen. Okay, so there's a poll coming up on your um, thing on your screen. It should be popping up that says, "Is this your first year participating in Strawberries and Salad Greens Day?" So. Go ahead and answer that, and then we can take a look at some of the answers. We'll give it just a couple more seconds. Great, so it looks like 57% of our participants on the webinar today said yes, this is their first Strawberries and Salad Greens Day, and 43% said no. So it's great, we're about 50-50, a little more that we have some newbies, and that's great. I love seeing new schools. So what we have today is um, 
Right now in 2017, we have 49 schools signed up to serve locally grown strawberries and or salad greens as part of their school lunch or breakfast on June 7th. And we have 44 schools signed up to host education stations in the cafeteria during lunch or do something else that is education based, whether that's after school activities or in front of the school. We'll talk about some of those options later. There is still time to sign up. We can't guarantee you'll get a volunteer, but if you know your school is going to be participating or you know another school, encourage them to go online and let us know that they're signing up and they can do that on the website. All right, so let's talk about serving local berries and greens. Um, how do we do this is an important question, right? So the first thing is um, that you should know is that your food service vendor is responsible for doing that. You know, Aussie's not providing the food and we're not asking uh, teachers to bring it in on their own. Um, it's really a conversation that should be happening with your food service vendor. Many food service vendors are just doing this. So for instance, if you have Revolution Foods, they've committed to doing this at all the schools that they're serving for lunch. So you will see berries and greens on your tray that day. If you haven't talked to them, please reach out and talk to them. Um, and just in general, reach out and talk to your food service vendor. If they're asking for ideas or you're a food service director yourself and you're someone who's playing the menu, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. We just want to see local strawberries, local salad greens on the menu. If you can only get one, that's okay. If you can only, if you want to get both local, that's great too. Um, you can get creative, you know, add sliced strawberries to your salad and make the salad with spinach and romaine. Just put sliced strawberries on your salad bar that day if you have a salad bar at your school. Um, you can serve them separately, so you could be using a different green on a chicken sandwich, let's say, or you can serve the strawberries whole as their fruit for the day. Um, like I said, beef up your salad bar if you want to get creative that day. You can go on and put strawberries on there, do a variety of greens. You can do other kinds of berries if you can't get a hold of strawberries or your kids get strawberries and you want to do something different. Does anyone else have thoughts or suggestions as to what they've done in the past that they want to share with the group before we move on? Okay, we'll keep going. If you do, you can always speak up later. All right, so running your education station. This is probably what most of you are here for. So what is an education station? An education station is a table that students pass by to receive quick information about today's event and local foods. Um, I typically envision this table being positioned uh, as the kids are coming out of the lunch line. So if I'm a student, I would get my tray, I'd walk through the lunch line, I'd have my lunch, I'd see my berries and greens on my tray, and then as I'm going towards my seat, I'd pass by this table. If that doesn't work in your cafeteria, that's fine. Put the table wherever it works for you guys, wherever you feel like it's best suited for your students. Um, it is great to have that table manned by a person, which is why we offer this volunteer to come and help you if you need it. You can also have a teacher or a school designated contact. If you have food court at your school, they're great people for this. If you have other AmeriCorps service members who are working in your school and they have time in their schedule, you know, reach out to who these people are. Your table should look exciting, so we're going to have some photos of what that looks like. We're going to give you some materials, and I'll talk about what those are later. later. And then you can also um, feel free to bring any additional items. So if you want to bring a tablecloth, or you want to bring baskets, or you have things at home, or from the art room, or um, from some of your, if you have a nutrition education program, you know, feel free to spruce it up and make it pretty. So once all the students are seated for that lunch period, if you would like to, you can take your show on the road and go visit each of the cafeteria tables to talk to the students a little more. When I go to schools for this event, I typically stand by the table as the kids are passing by and talk to them, tell them about what's on their tray, give them a quick talking point. And then once they're seated, I go around with my roll of stickers and I give each kid a sticker to, as they've tried their strawberries and salad greens day. So if your cafeteria doesn't have room for a table or your students eat in the classroom, how do you do this event? So it's totally fine. Just go walk around. Grab your materials, whatever you can carry. If you have a cart you want to take, that's wonderful. If not, um, the schools where I volunteered where they don't have room for a table or they're eating in their classroom, I usually put the sticker roll on my arm. Um, I grab my handout. I grab a poster. I'm wearing a t-shirt 
and I just go classroom to classroom. Engage the kids to tell them, hey, look on your lunch tray, you're getting local berries and greens today. Why is that important? Why are we doing this? Kids all over DC are eating this today. Here's a sticker, make sure you try it. Super simple. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. So here are some examples of what an education station can look like. Um, this is multiple different schools around the city from the last couple years and really it can be however elaborate, that bottom left corner is pretty elaborate to um, super simple, a top left, to walking around the cafeteria and either giving samples or giving out stickers, which you can see on the bottom right, um, to kind of like the standard general on the top right. Um, we'll have different materials each year. The plants will look different. Sometimes we have strawberry plants, sometimes we have lettuce plants. Um, some schools do samples, some schools just do it on the lunch tray. It's kind of really however you want it to be. And that's the nice thing about this event. So what additional activities can you be working on? Um, if you would like to do something else other than the cafeteria piece, or if the cafeteria piece is just not going to fly in your school. I know cafeterias are rough environments in some schools and this is just not feasible and that's okay. So you could host the education station in the morning or in the afternoon during pick up and drop off. Um, and that's also another way to engage parents. So to talk to parents about what's going on with their children. Um, we also have a letter online that is specifically like drafted towards parents. So if you wanted to send that out and then say, you know, during morning drop off or afternoon pickup, we'll have a table set up where we can talk to you more about it. You can do that as well. Um, incorporate lessons and activities around local food into the classroom and during your after school activities. We have some of those resources online as well. And then there's like little things that you can do. So if you are a teacher, you have teachers and they're doing like do nows or other types of writing prompts. That day on June 7th, have them talk about their favorite summer fruit or vegetable or a farm that they visited where they saw fruits and vegetables grow or the time they've spent in their school garden or a time that they've tasted something new that they really enjoyed and they didn't think they were going to enjoy it or that they didn't really enjoy and they thought they would. Um, so really just doing little touch points throughout the day is, is a great way to do it. Um, we have some morning announcements in our resource packet so they are available now and you, there are ones for um, the couple days leading up to it, the day of, there's ones for a couple weeks before and after. So incorporate those into your morning announcements. Like I said, you can send a letter home to parents and caregivers about what's going on in the school. And then lastly, what we would really love is using social media to engage your school community and connect with others in the district. So you can do that by sharing photos or stories or notes um, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and any other social media that your school uses. Uh, if you are the external volunteer or you're a parent that's volunteering, just make sure you check with your school point of contact about what their rules are about social media, whether they post photos of their kids, who has photo releases. Um, it's just, it's a very sensitive subject. So we want to be respectful of the school's prior uh, protocol for that. We do have a hashtag though, so if you are doing any kind of social media or blogging or pictures, use the hashtag berries and greens and then we can keep tabs on kind of what's going on across the city. It's a really fun way for us at Aussie to stay engaged since everything's happening at the same time. So resources for all of these things that we just talked about. Go to our website, this, the address is at the bottom. Also if you just Google like Aussie strawberries and salad greens day, it'll come up. Um, there's a resource packet that you can download that has the morning announcements, sample tweets, um, lessons, activities for kind of kids of different ages and different classrooms that you can use. We have a sample letter to parents and caregivers up on the website. We have a link for um, a page that has lessons for all ages, so um, spaces where you can go to different websites and download free lesson plans about local fruits and vegetables. Um, and we have ones that I think they're broken up into like elementary, middle, and high school. Um, we have posters that we'll be giving out, but if you want extra copies or you want to have handouts to give to people, you can download that poster and print it out. And then I'm also going to archive this webinar on the website as well. So if you need to direct somebody for more information or you just want to look back. So materials, everybody loves materials. 
This year, Aussie is going to provide our Strawberries and Salad Greens Day sticker. Um, new this year, it'll have the hashtag on it. So I think that should be really fun for kids since they're starting to really get into the social media stuff. Um, we have two posters, our standard Choose What's in Season poster, which is yellow, and it's got the wheel with the seasons on it. Um, and it marks out where Strawberries and Salad Greens Day is. And then we also have a Serving Up Local poster that many of the schools already have. Um, but if you don't and you want one, you're welcome to take that. And that is really a way to showcase what food is being served local this week or this day or this month. So you can put it up in your cafeteria and it's whiteboard ready and we have some markers if you need them. And you can just write on there like today we're serving local strawberries and local salad greens and we got them from this farm. And you can get that information from your vendor or your food service director. Uh, we'll have a one pager with talking points and fun facts so that whoever is manning that education station or using if your teachers need some extra talking points, you can share that. We'll also have strawberry plants, hopefully, weather, weather cooperation. Um, they will have some little strawberries on them typically, but we're hoping they, they will pull through. Uh, and then we do have t-shirts for whoever comes to pick up the materials and the school point of contact. So where and when can I get these items for my school? We are doing pickup on Tuesday, June 6th, the day before the event, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Aussie office. Um, if the weather is nice enough, it's not raining, uh, I will be sitting outside with Carolina and whoever else wants to join us uh, in the courtyard. You won't be able to miss us. We'll have all this stuff listed above here laid out and you can come by anytime 10 to 3 and grab your materials. If it is raining, uh, you'll just want to come up into the building and go to the fourth floor. Um, if you can't make the pickup time, please send me an email and let me know, and I'm happy to schedule another time for you to come to the office before then um, and get as much of the materials that we have in at that time. Um, our office is closest to the Union Station Metro. We're also not too far from Noma. Um, parking around us is really difficult, but Sometimes right outside of our office, you can like quick pull into the loading zone, jump out, grab your stuff and go back in. If you have someone in the car with you, that would be helpful. Um, but if you really get stuck and you can't find anywhere to park and you're nervous about jumping out of your car, I'll, my phone number will be at the end of here. You can give me a call and I can run it out to the front of your car. I would just ask that don't ask me to go anywhere other than just like right outside of our office because I'm about nine months pregnant. Um, so if you have any questions about that, let us know. All right, so for those of you who are external volunteers, or for those of you that signed up to get a volunteer, um, there's a couple of things we want to talk about. So make sure that you're checking in with your school point of contact the day before the event, just to make sure there's not any schedule changes. Schools have things that come up, and we just want to make sure you're getting all the information. Um, I will be matching volunteers today and tomorrow. Most of them are done, but I haven't emailed. I just want to make sure all the logistics are worked out. So your, the point of contact and the volunteer will get an email connecting each other. You'll have each other's emails and phone numbers. Um, and it's really important that you guys just touch base before the event so that you each have a contact person. Um, also important to just make sure that you designate who's going to pick up the materials if you're getting an external volunteer. Is it that external person or is the school point of contact going to go pick up the materials. So if you're the external volunteer, when you get to your school, make sure you sign in at the security desk in the front office of your school. You're going to need a photo ID, so make sure you come with a photo ID. Um, keep your point of contact's phone number handy and their name that day, just in case you get to the school and you're frazzled or you're running late, you can let them know. Um, wear comfortable shoes. I know that's not written here, but that typically, you know, you're on your feet for a couple hours and it can get tiring. Um, and then just be flexible if changes arise. Schools are not the um, school, school, kids stay on a really good schedule in school, but there's always changes and um, it kind of just happens. So just go into this with a flexible mindset, I think, is the best way to set yourself up for success. That is all the information I have. Um, I want to leave ample time for question and answer. It's about 10.20. So if you have any questions, please type them into the chat function um, or use the question function. I'm not sure which one is easier for you guys, but I have them both open so I can see. Um, and we will read the questions aloud and answer them. And we'll stay on here for about 10 minutes until 1030 and get all those questions answered. If nobody speaks up for five minutes, we'll probably end a little, a little earlier than that. 
Um, and I'm just going to move it to the last slide, which is our contact slide. And like I said, I'm the main point of contact and also Carolina Arango is our contact as well. Um, she'll be helping me out the, for pickup and the day of the event. And uh, if I'm not here, she will also be your main point of contact. Thank you all for participating. I really appreciate you taking the time out to do this. Um, and I think that this year's event is going to be really wonderful. So I'm looking forward to any questions people have. Otherwise, have a great Tuesday. Um, so the first question we got is, will there be someone from ASI visiting schools who participate this year? Uh, if you requested a volunteer and your volunteers from ASI, then the answer is yes, you would get an ASI person. Um, our superintendent is scheduled, I think, to visit one school. I'm not sure exactly which school that is um, and if that is set in stone, but typically we like to have just one school that's around our office easy for her to get to. Um, but other than that, we do not do like a Aussie folks coming to each school. Thank you for that question. The next question that we have is about the t-shirts. Is there a limit to how many t-shirts are issued? Good question. Typically we give, um, they're really adult sized t-shirts, so they're not for kids. Um, we typically give one t-shirt to the volunteer, um, one t-shirt to the point of contact for the school. So whoever comes to pick up, if you have those two people, we'll give you two t-shirts. Um, you know, depending on how many, we do have a decent amount of um, large sizes left over from the past couple years years so I'm happy to start giving those out if people aren't picky about the size um, but typically it's one to two t-shirts per school The next question we have is about a limit to the number of stickers that people can get. Um, we order stickers in rolls of 500. We typically give one roll to each school, but if your, your school has more than 500 kids, we're happy to give you extra stickers. We want to make sure you have you know one sticker per child, essentially. So come prepared when you pick up. Let us know how many kids you have, and we'll make sure you get enough stickers for sure.
Are there any more questions? Feel free to type them in if you have them. Uh, we just got a question. Can we email you to pick up materials in advance? So yes, if you're not able to make the pickup day, it's best to come on pickup day because we do have a couple of things that are getting delivered like that morning, like the plants. We can't really store in the office for too long because they won't get enough sunlight. Um, but if you're unable to make the pickup day, you're welcome to either send somebody else and just let us know, um, or you're welcome to schedule, email me and schedule another time to pick up, but I can't guarantee we'll have um, everything depending on when you come, but we'll do our best for sure. All right, so it's 10.30. Um, if there are no other questions, I will end the webinar. Um, if you do have additional questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Again, my email is here. You can give me a call as well. This is my cell phone number. Um, definitely leave a message. If I don't pick up, I will call you back. You can text me if you want as well. Um, and I'm really looking forward to a great event this year. So if everyone has a good time, I will see, hopefully see all of you on June 6th for pickup. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.